Thank you very much uh, to everyone for organizing this meeting and for inviting the ILO to, to participate in this very interesting panel. Um, in fact, as very well highlighted by Dr. Schutter earlier in his keynote remark, social protection, as he said, is an ingredient to be put at the core of the development process. And I think one of the key messages we're learning again from the COVID crisis is that we have to move from the idea that social protection is a cost, but it's rather an investment. And it's also an investment that it's not only affordable for the rich people, the developed, the developed countries, as Dr. De Schutter uh, mentioned very clearly, but also affordable for the developing countries. Indeed, uh, social protection will bring positive return for the inclusive economic development and will also help reducing poverty and inequalities. Countries have shown that they were able to rebound and also learn from this crisis. We have many examples from the Asian crisis in 1997, but also from the economic and financial crisis in 2009, including in, in Africa. And following this crisis, there was also a regain of attention for social protection, with new measures being adopted uh, in many countries. So this crisis is indeed, as Dr. De Schutte said, is a real opportunity to start building better and to start building back better. And for that, we should not miss the train. We should start now and we should start uh, quickly because we need social protection universal for all. Because we also need innovative measures to be able to cover the informal economy that was also mentioned by Dr. De Schutter. And we also need to quickly move and uh, uh, start discussion to increase investment in social protection. Indeed, without significant effort on investment in social protection, the progress that were made so far to achieve the sustainable development goals are put at risk. What the financing gap that we're mentioning in a recent ILO report show that $1.2 trillion are still missing to achieve at least the minimum social protection, the, the social protection floor in the countries. In the developing, in the low income countries, this gap will be $77 billion or 16% of their GDP. As we had already seen in the post, it's not a small amount that countries will need to mobilize. And if we take the example of Africa, uh, the effort in financing social protection will be, uh, will be needed to be multiplied by 2.5 uh, to achieve at least this minimum social protection that is the human right for all. So indeed, it's not a small effort, but there are innovation that we've seen already in, in countries, including in African countries, that show that this is possible. Apart from this innovation and the new financing option, we probably need to look at also how to boost the formalization of the economy. And this will have a twofold uh, result. In one, hand, it will, in one hand, it will provide a better protection for workers in the informal economy, it will also turn them into contributors of their own social protection. And the other end, formalization of the economy will also help increasing the tax base and the tax revenue that the state needs to continue expanding the coverage of social protection. Equally important to investing more in social protection is also to invest in better in social protection. In the fact, give my last uh, two messages. Um, the ILO, together with UNICEF, the European Commission, and the Global Coalition for Social Protection, are now, uh, are now implementing a project to support countries in increasing their financing for social protection, improving their public finances, with the result to extend coverage. The, the project is already being implemented in 10 countries and it continues to expand as also the, the response to the COVID is more and more needed across the country. So those were uh, the message and I thank you very much.